Welcome to the American dream, selling the Twin Cities. Minnesota is known for its incredible diversity. I'm your host, Amber Garofalo. This is the American dream, selling the Twin Cities. Let's go. Welcome to Minneapolis and St. Paul. I am Barry Berg with American Dream TV, and I'm here with Paul Babcock, who is the president and CEO of McPhail Center for Music. The Twin Cities are renowned for the quality of their arts programs. But McPhail is the largest music school of its kind in the nation with over 15,000 students. Paul, McPhail has 104 community partnerships. Mm -hmm. Could you explain what a community partnership is? We started community partnerships about 30 years ago where we realized that our community didn't always have access to McPhail's programming and that could be due to location, geography, you know, distance, finances. And so as we look to our partnerships and we look toward uh, the future, we want to continue to remove all barriers uh, so that everyone has the access and opportunity to participate in music instruction. Partnerships and reaching out into the community has been a real key way in doing that because it allows us to remove just kind of the barriers of the distance and, act, and having to come to a building. While many people are able to come to a building, not everybody can. And so we want to bring the program to the students where they are at. I'm really excited about how we're continuing to shape and grow what music education is. And as music education evolves, it needs to evolve with music that is being enjoyed and, and shared uh, by our students and by our, by our communities. So we're going to continue to evolve programming such as electronic music and recording arts, uh, global music initiatives, so that music of all cultures is celebrated and welcomed at McPhail through performance, through learning opportunities, and, and so on, so that there is, in the in all music's being shared equally. Right. As we know, McPhail has a mission to transform lives through music. I want to congratulate you. I can't speak highly enough of what a phenomenal institution I think this is. And so thank you very much for your time today. Well, thank you so much, Barry. Right. It's a real pleasure. Five years ago, after an extensive search, wanting to find a smaller property in the city of Minneapolis on one of the lakes, Dana Allpeter and her husband Steve found this property, which at the time was a modest but 110 plus year old cottage. They saw the opportunity in this to create and transform a property into what has become, in my judgment, one of the finest empty nester, smaller properties in the city that truly sings. Well, thank you, Barry. It's, uh, it was a very, very challenging project, but one that we were very interested in doing, particularly in this neighborhood with the historic homes that we're surrounded by and the beautiful, beautiful nature. And one that we decided was uh, worth our while to do for a long-term uh, investment and enjoyment for our family. Well, and you've heard me say less is more, mm -hmm. a great deal. One of the beauties I see is the way this home does open up, take advantage of sight lines, setting views mm -hmm. on a relatively small city mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm but it lives large. Well, and one of the reasons that, that it does live large is for me, you can breathe in this house. And that to me creates an environment that is pleasant on the sunniest days or the coldest days. We have a kind of a dreary day today, Yes. but the house feels um, inviting and kind of sunny, Absolutely. even on a dreary day, right. because you feel the exterior. Well, great job. Thank you. Dana. Thank you, Barry. I appreciate right. that. Terrific. Thanks for joining us today. Again, I am Barry Berg on this rainy early autumn afternoon. I appreciate your joining me on the tour of McPhail Center for Music. 
and also walking through the beautiful transformation of a home on Lake of the Isles. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Sherry Fine. We're here in Minneapolis today, and everywhere you look in the Twin Cities, there's art. So I thought I'd take you on a little tour of a few murals around the Twin Cities. Let's get going. Raymond, thanks for coming out and meeting with me of today. Course. I know this is your neighborhood and you know a lot yes. about murals and street art. Traditionally, Uptown is the artist area. Growing up around Uptown, I've watched the artwork grow in this neighborhood. Can you tell me a little bit about yeah. that? I, you know, I would agree with you 100%. It just seems like now there's more and more visibly without having to go to a gallery. As Minneapolis has done it, St. Paul is starting to do the same thing. If you go there, you'll see all the buildings have murals, wonderful street art. We're so fortunate to meet up with you tonight, Angela. There's so much artwork in this neighborhood. What can you tell me about it? The reason we decided to do a mural festival here was for a couple of reasons. One, we identified that over 300 studios in Creative entrepreneurs make their living in this neighborhood. Forecast Public Art, who's our creative partner, is also in the neighborhood. So we got together with this idea, let's put a mural festival together, let's showcase both local and national artists, invite people to come in. And so the first festival was launched in 2019 and it was eight days in the fall. And then the pandemic hit, the 2020 festival was canceled. But we decided that we didn't want to lose our momentum because we really saw the difference the murals were making to connect our community. As you, if you understand us historically, we've grown from largely industrial to now this new emerging residential. And so how do you connect people? And we thought what better way to connect them than is to change their, change their point of view. I got a question, are these all permanent murals or do some of them rotate? Do you? Well, murals by nature cannot be permanent because we're here in Minnesota okay. and eventually the elements will take them, which is really heartbreaking to think about, but it's part of the risk and artists know that. We're small enough and yet a big enough neighborhood that we want to keep as many murals as possible. And by the end of the summer, there'll be 50 in the neighborhood. Wow. Angela, thank you so much for all your explanation and telling us all about the murals in the neighborhood. My pleasure. Thanks for coming out. I hope everybody will get a chance to see the murals and visit our neighborhood. In fact, there's a great tap room nearby with a great mural. Let's awesome. go. Check it out. <laughs> We have Jill from the Urban Growler here today, and Jill's gonna give us a little bit of an overview and let us know what's going on in this community in St. Paul. Well, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the community. So it was really important to my partner in life and business, Deb, that we be representative of our community, which consists of, you know, we have dance groups here, we have potters, we have painters, we have glass blowers, muralists. And so it was really important to us to provide a space where everyone can gather. People come here and just say, you know, I was following this mural tour and was so pleased to find this little urban oasis tucked in with all these murals. Jill, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for enlightening us and thank you so much for showing us what's going on in this great community. Thank you for joining me today on my journey around the Twin Cities to see the murals that have been so inspirational and educational as well about these beautiful communities. I'll see you next time on The American Dream. Welcome to my hometown of Elko Newmarket, Minnesota. This tight-knit community is a great place to raise a family, enjoy awesome parks, trails, and so many other great amenities. Today, I'm gonna take you to talk to a few business owners and show you around town. Let's go. Well, today I'd like to introduce you to Karen Romola at New Market Bank, who she is the Vice President of Retail Banking. But most importantly, why we're here today to talk, Karen, is because you got a great new foundation that you just started, Giving Grace Foundation. Tell me a little bit about your story and how you got the foundation started. Sure, so 
My husband and I um, were married for 15 years and for the last eight years here we've been trying to start our family. Um, we struggled and we ended up having to go through the whole fertility treatment and that kind of thing. Um, we ended up with two different clinics here in Minnesota and we had two failed attempts. Um, and finally, after many years of trying, we um, have our little blessing. Her name is Grace, hence the reason, Giving Grace Foundation. It's a good name for the foundation yeah. then. <laughs> so your foundation's really based around kind of your personal experience and the, the problems with infertility. Um, yeah, we started a board and there's six of us and we should be able to give an award out by year end already. So That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So, so what for those that don't know, what potentially can be the cost of some of these treatments? Um, to go through the first stages, um, it's called a retrieval that can cost anywhere from twenty to thirty wow. thousand dollars. If somebody wants to donate, how can they do that? Yep. So a couple ways. Um, probably the easiest is just going to the website. It's um, givinggracemn.org. Um, there's a link on there for donate, and they can just pay electronically that way. I also have it set up with Venmo, and that link is on there too. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for talking with yeah, us today, Karen, and I appreciate your time today. Yeah. We don't even have to hop in the car for this next stop. We're headed over to Firehouse Grill to check out this local staple in the community. Let's go. I'm excited to introduce you today to Kate Timmerman. She's the owner of Firehouse Grill. Kate, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to talk with me today. Thank you for coming down. Absolutely. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about your business. So tell me, um, tell me how the restaurant got started. The restaurant Firehouse Grill got started in 2013 when Tom and Katie Johnson purchased the property and started it as Firehouse Grill. Um, Tom was a firefighter for the Savage Fire Department and I believe that is how the name Firehouse came about. That is where all of the, the memorabilia is from, is from donations and um, the Savage Fire Department. Tell me a little bit about some of the things that you've done for the community here in Elko Newmarket. So within the community we have done everything from band fundraisers which is a spaghetti dinner to um, this Friday evening we're doing a plated sit down dinner for the fire department which is their largest fundraiser. We've done pancake breakfasts for our Boy Scouts. Um, I donate to as many of the local schools as I can for their sporting events. Um, it's all about community. What, uh, what are some of the things that you love about owning a restaurant here in Elko Newmarket the most? Uh, the two stop signs to get to work. <laughs> no, um, probably just being able to see my neighbors, my friends. I've gotten to become friends with all of our people that come in and visit us. Um, it's just such a close-knit group um, and community. It's just nice to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one conversations with them when they walk in the door. It's not a stranger's face. For those that have never been here before, what are some of the menu items that you're most known for? Most known for our Western burger, pickle supremes, and probably either the Greek salad or our Cajun chicken pasta. Can't forget about the wings. All the wings are very good too, yes. I'll be getting some of those definitely after we get done here. That's yes. for sure. Well, Kate, I'm so happy that you took the time out to talk with us today. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit about Firehouse Grill, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Awesome, thank you. We're wrapping up the day here at Pete's Hill, the highest point in Scott County. I had a great time talking with Karen Romola with the Giving Grace Foundation, and it's always a great time hanging out at Firehouse Grill and getting some food. We'll see you on the next episode of The American Dream. Today we are in the city of Anoka, nestled right on the banks of the Rum River. There's a lot of history here in Anoka that we wanted to share with you, some historic buildings as well as the thriving downtown area that has fantastic places to visit and a lot of great places for entertainment. So let's go ahead and check it out. So today we're at the Anoka Hardware Store. It's a speakeasy here in downtown Anoka, and I'm here with the owner. This is Jason Hostetler. How you doing? Thanks for having us, Jason. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. 
So tell us a little bit about how you're inspired to start a speakeasy in downtown Anoka. Yeah, my wife and I, we'd always go to speakeasies probably the last 10 to 15 years. But we were sick of driving to the city and south for good cocktails. And so we got a little break during COVID built this place, it was a great time to do it. What do you think makes this such a unique experience for your clients? First, our staff solely focus on customer service here. We say thank you, we appreciate every single person that comes in here. Our bartenders are two of the best craft cocktail bartenders I feel in the state. And so when you put that together with great customer service, um, I feel like we're doing something right and we get people coming back. Most definitely. Well, so thank you so much for having us here today. I'm of sure course. that uh, we'll be back many, many times. So yep. thank you. Bring so all much. your friends. Uh, for sure. Good we seeing will. you, Tiffany. Yeah, you too. Thanks, Jason. <laughs>if you have ever visited downtown Anoka, likely you passed one of the most historic buildings in the city of Anoka, which is currently called the Mad Hatter. And I'm here with my friend Liz, who's the owner of the Mad Hatter. It's a tea house right in downtown Anoka on the Rum River. Thanks for having us. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Why don't you tell us, Liz, a little bit about the Mad Hatter? Sure. So I started the Mad Hatter in 1999, originally located, uh, as you know, in the original Anoka Post Office building. And the concept was kind of like a fancy coffee shop. Right. Originally is kind of how we started. And it just kind of morphed from there. And we just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It was built in 1857 and is the second oldest house in Anoka County. During the uh, Dakota Indian War in 1862, the owners of the house opened it to the uh, injured soldiers for medical care and to get relief from the war. Really? Yeah. Wow. But the inside of this building still really maintains a lot of the integrity of its original yes. architecture, yes. which is really cool. Yeah. Well, Liz, thank you so much for having us here. We really appreciated the time that we spent here, and it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Tiffany. You bet. So I am at Appleberry's Attic Craft Studio with Jen Appleberry and we thought we'd share with you one of the unique businesses that Anoka has to offer right down here on Main Street. And Jen, can you tell them a little bit about what Appleberry's Attic has to offer then? Absolutely. So at Appleberry's Attic, we like to say that we are a creativity and a connection spot, right? So downtown Anoka has great boutiques, restaurants, places to shop, yeah. but you always need something to do. And right. so at Appleberry's Attic, we do private parties, craft classes, we do walk-in workshops, all sorts of things that deal with creativity and connection. Being downtown right here on Main Street, Anoka yes. being the Halloween capital of the world, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you see here right around how? Oh goodness, so Halloween is just jumping down here. Honestly, the entire month of October is full of parades, runs, different events, ghost tours. It's just amazing. And as of last year, it celebrated 100 years. So we're so super- 101 years this year. Yes. Wow. So we're super excited to just get involved with the community, have them come in. We actually just launched our brand new craft menu for fall and Halloween. So right. it's gonna be so much fun around here this time of year. Awesome, thanks so much, You're Jen. welcome. Thank you again for joining me today in one of my favorite places in downtown Anoka. This is again a great place to hang out with your friends, to eat and drink and just take in the river views. But that's all we have time for today. Join us for another episode of American Dream TV. Namaste. I'm Chevrolet Voss. And I'm Andy Harwood. And we are the Voss Harwood team right here in the Twin Cities, Minnesota. And we want to show you our favorite little city. We love this place so much we moved here. It's West St. Paul. Yep, it's West St. Paul, not to be confused with St. Paul. So we're going to show you around and uh, meet a few people who live here and own businesses here. Let's check it out. A West St. Paul landmark that everybody knows and I'm excited to show you is Dodge Nature Center and Dodge Nature Center Preschool. It's such a cool nature center. I think it's about 140 acres. It's just like an oasis in the middle of West St. Paul. This community has so much nature 
including Dodge Nature Center here. So many lakes, so many great outdoor spaces and just cool outdoor environment things to do. I just love it. I'm very excited to introduce you to one of my favorite neighbors here in West St. Paul. This is Edgar Herrera. He is a renowned local artist, and I refer to him very fondly as the mayor of St. Paul, of West St. Paul, correct? Correct. Edgar, tell us a little bit more about your art and your family and your heritage. My name is Edgar Herrera. Uh, I'm an immigrant from Mexico, located in West St. Paul. Um, I'm a very uh, active member of the community. I, I love it that it's a very strong, rich Hispanic community. Like, as you can see, we got Mitchell Love, we got Castillos, we got Taco Libre, we got El Gordo, we got everything you want here. <laughs> so whatever you want, you'll find it on West St. Paul. I'm here with my other favorite neighbor. This is Counselor Lisa Eng San. And I thought uh, she would be the best person to uh, tell us about some of her favorite restaurants out here. Yeah, West St. Paul just really has a wide variety of restaurants. Of of all different um, sort of affordability. Uh, West St. Paul's Cheers, as I call it, is Amore, so you mm -hmm. cheers with coffee. Tara mm -hmm. owns that, owns that uh, establishment, and you walk in there, and it really, they do live the word Amore, right? Mm -hmm. it's, you feel love with love. every cup, and you know, it's just, you feel really great going in there in the morning. So I managed to coax the owner, John, out of Beirut's kitchen. Thank you. John, Thank you. tell us about Well, number one, welcome for, for coming in here and doing this. This is amazing, and it was a great way to start the weekend. Um, so yes, next year, we will be celebrating 40 years in business. Wow. Uh, my parents started this uh, from scratch uh, 40 years ago. Um, they're a true immigrant story. They, were, they came here from Lebanon, 1976 and nothing but more than $40 in their pocket, and they built a business that, uh, that me and my wife were lucky enough to, to take over about 20 years ago. Noelle Mortensen and her husband Dan have owned this business for Next year is our 60th anniversary, so we have been in the community for 59 years now. Uh, we started when there was just farmland here, uh, so we've been family owned and run for 59 years and we enjoy our community and we give back to our community and we take good care of our community. We are here with our local boba tea expert, Rex. What's your favorite boba tea? Teacup is my favorite boba tea. So Teacup is owned by a local Taiwanese family. As you can see, this lovely little city is literally like a United Nations of food culture right here. And check us out next time on the next episode of The American Dream, selling the Twin Cities that we'll be hosting. <laughs> Welcome, we are at beautiful Lake of the Isles in Minneapolis. This neighborhood is one of the most oldest historic neighborhoods in Minneapolis as part of the chain of lakes. Back in the late 1800s and early 1900s, this is where all of the lumber barons and railroad barons would build their beautiful homes. Today, we're gonna get a peek inside one of those and also see where Minneapolis is today. But for right now, I'm gonna go change clothes and see you in a bit. We're now in beautiful Lowry Hill at this fantastic historic home that was built in 1892. And we are here with Kim Niosi from Niosi Design, who is the interior designer who worked on this project to get it ready for market. And one thing that we want to talk about today is the difference between staging and interior design. Wow, there is a big difference, I have to tell you. One of the things, when I come into a space like this, you'll take a look at what are the positive attributes of the home, and you really try to reflect on how can we best showcase those types of things. We can do that by illustrating the beautiful wood in this particular case by using a lighter paint. We used a really creamy, beautiful white 
that works with the undertones of the wood. And look at how this really lives. It lives large. We've got our dining room here. We've got this sitting room here. We've got this family room over here. It just really flows throughout the whole home. And I think that's what we're really after is the family gathering and family time together. And it really does feel so inviting and fresh. I just love how you did all the walls in the same color that really brightened it up. And I love the mixture of kind of almost coastal and very modern fixtures. It just really brought it into this next level of like, oh, this is approachable to a family today and doesn't feel like it has to be so stuffy and formal. Like you could plop down here or play a game or have all your family meals in this beautiful dining room. I wanted it to be approachable, but a little luxe, yes. a little sophisticated, but a little relaxed at the same time. Mm -hmm. Staging, you know, it works. Yes. It, it just helps people to identify how they can best live in the home and it's just, you know, it's a great way of showcasing it. Well, it is a beautiful home and you've really brought it into today's lifestyle. And thank you, by the way, for the opportunity to be here. Well, thank just, you for working your magic as well, always. It's, it's been fun, it's been fun. Thank you. We started our day at the lakes, which celebrates what Minnesota is best known for, which is all of our 10,000 lakes. And we started in the lakes area. We've been in Kenwood and Lowry Hill, and now we've literally just gone a couple blocks away and we're over at the Minneapolis Sculpture Garden and the Walker Art Center, which celebrate really how progressive Minneapolis is. This area also has a lot of wonderful restaurants, which we'll be going to right after this. But this area really has embraced taking the best of the old and the new and making it really accessible to people. Amy, what is your favorite thing at the Sculpture Garden? My favorite, we are standing right in front of it, is the Spoon Bridge and Cherry by Klaus Oldenburg. It's, we're so lucky to have it back. We just, it just went under renovation and now it's back so we can all enjoy and I just love like and you know anyone can come here it's free 24 hours it's <laughs> free you've got gorgeous uh, downtown Minneapolis beautiful like pedestrian footbridge there it's access to great restaurants we're gonna head to cardamom I love to bring my kids down here it's a great it's a great part of Minneapolis Thank you for joining us on this episode of American Dream, where we reimagined how you use classic architecture today for a modern family. We were able to enjoy the beautiful lakes that Minneapolis has to offer and wrapped up at the Sculpture Garden and the Walker. Thank you for joining us on this episode of American Dream, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching this episode of the American Dream Selling the Twin Cities. I'm Amber Garofalo and I've had a blast hosting you along with all of the top real estate professionals in the Twin Cities. Catch us next time and be sure to follow the American Dream TV on social. That's all for today and cheers to your American Dream.